one of the survivors remembered. She said, we are survivors today, but 75 years ago, we were dead. We only had a few signs of life before we were supposed to follow to the millions of others. You are three, the soldiers told us, you can go wherever you want. Us? We are the last ones of our families, without parents, without children, without, uh, without brothers, without sisters, without homeland, without names, without hope. Where should we go? Dear President Rivlin, dear distinguished Chancellor Merkel, members of the Parliament, Your Excellencies, dear guests, when Alexander Vorontsov, a Russian soldier, on a late afternoon of the 20th, on the January 27th, 45, fulfilled the, the tour of the cynical script, Arbeit macht frei, work will set you free. He saw the pictures of the first, the first uh, very pictures of the of the concentration camp in Auschwitz. Pictures of kids that had to stretch their arms to get their names tattooed. People without. People without any destiny, that just got numbers on their arms. It was pictures of horrors without any borders. It was pictures without, of the crimes, German crimes. When Vorontsov, many years later, spoke about what he saw for his camera when he took those pictures about these memories. The time has no power. Dear President Rivlin, yet two days ago we went together for the gates of Auschwitz and never has a walk been that hard for me and never have I been that thankful to have a friend next to me. In front of us were the pictures of the Russian soldiers and our ears were the stories of the survivors. Three of them came to us, with us, from Germany. They survived as children, alone in hell. If anyone can imagine, just even for a moment, of how it is to be a child, all left alone, can maybe imagine what it means for the survivors to go back there. Thank you for coming to accompany us there. And we would like to, like to thank you and all the survivors for being here today. I have to also thank you, distinguished president. Thank you for being at Yad Vashem in Israel a few days ago, for being next to you in Auschwitz when we were thinking about the liberation and for coming together from Auschwitz to Berlin in order to be here in the Bundestag and speak in front of it. The fact, dear ladies and gentlemen, that an Israeli president is doing those steps together with a German and that 
the fact that the president today is speaking in our house fulfills me with a lot of joy. And I would like to thank you for that on behalf of my country for being here. Your presence here today is a sign of a connection between both of our countries, between Germany and Israel. I'm very thankful for the sign, but even more so, I understand this as a duty to to take the hand that Israel has stretched out to us, to take it with a big meaning. We would like to justify the fact that Israel stretched out its hand, and we will never forget, and we will be standing at Israel's side. The mutual commemoration in the, next, in the last days and the hours together here in the Bundestag are very special moments, not only for me. We do know that time has power over us, and it's up to us to stand up against it. I want to stand up for it, both as the president of Germany and as a citizen. My generation grew up with the pictures of Alexander Vorontsov. It accompanied us everywhere. And we were always confronted with the wish to forget and deny those pictures. And still, we became the witnesses of their power over time. What those pictures show, all those people like Elevisa, Simon Weil, Arno Lustiger, Simon Paris, and others. All these people what they have reported on in this place at the Bundestag is nothing that we can forget. If we were to belittle those memories, it would mean to to deny what those uh, what those victims told us. The Shoah is part of the German history. It was, it was a long process accompanied by a lot of resistance, but a lot of Germans could only find their peace with the history of their history because of these memories. Roman Herzog, when he spoke, when he decided to, to bring this commemoration day 20 years ago, he said, it's not, an, it's not about if we remember, but how we remember. We will have to find new ways to remember today for new generations. The generations that are asking, what do these memories have to do with our life? We'll have to give new answers to young Germans that are children of parents and families that have come to us from different countries. The, the answer can't be, this is not our history, it has nothing to do with us. We all have responsibility for history. And we will have to pay attention to our words if we want to avoid that the commemoration 
will turn into a ritual. We cannot just satisfy ourselves only to speak about the uncomprehensible about the Shoah, the Holocaust. The European Jews, the Sinti and Roma, the homosexuals politically abused and the so-called asocial people. Those who want to understand the crimes, they need to go back all the way all those paths that led to the gates of Auschwitz, the logistics of the death. They all came out of the desks, from the desks of people, of clerks in Berlin, with Berlin addresses. There are still more and more locations where people were killed, and more, many Germans don't even know their names. And especially because we understand that those crimes and those faraway locations still have an impact we have to call and remember that it was Germans that did it. We have to speak about the instrumentalization of memories. Writing memories is not something that needs to be done with politicians. It has to, it has to belong to the freedom of historians. It cannot become a weapon of politicians. Whoever wants to understand the history needs to think about the source of nationalistic thinking, the hatred, the destroying of any common sense, and also the destroyal of the state, of the loyal state, and the parliament. The first sentence of our constitution says to anybody who wants to read, Whatever happened in Auschwitz, the free state puts the honor of a, any human being on top of everything, above everything. So whoever wants to remember, whoever wants to honor the memories of victims has to defend democracies. My Damen und Herren, Dear ladies and gentlemen, a few years ago, my speech could have ended over here at this point. We were all, we all agreed about memory and about how to care for the mutual culture of remembering. But I'm afraid that our certainty has failed us. I wished I could say and be convinced about the fact that the Germans have understood. But how can I? How can I say it if there is still hatred again? If there is still if debates are being influenced by nationalistic ideas. If Jews have to put aside the menorah in their homes, if a handyman comes to do a job, if 
Only a heavy wooden door is the one that could prevent a massacre on a synagogue. How can I say that? If people are being attacked, if they can't take any more positions in their communities, how can I say it if a parliament, member of parliament, just because of his color of his skin, is being threatened with death? My problem is not that Germans are denying the past. My problem is that Germans understand more the past than understanding the, the present tense. If, if an authority of a uh, uh, if an understanding of vision of authority is being presenting as a future vision, I'm afraid we have not been prepared for all of this. But here, this is why the time is now examining us. Our responsibility towards the victims. This is our duty to take responsibility for it. Primo Levi said, it happened, therefore it can happen again. For any survivor, this simple sentence, the simple phrase, was the core of what we had to say. For us, this is not a theory, the sentence is not a theory. It's not just a, a sentence to say and an hour of remembrance. This could be the future, not a far future, but here and now. This is why there cannot be a button line. This is why distinguished president. This is why we're here 75 years after the liberation of Auschwitz. We're not forgetting what happened but we're not forgetting what could happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I am convinced that the majority in our country is in favor of democracy and understands our responsibility. So let's stand up. Let's, let's stand up against hatred and anti-Semitism. Let's not be seduced by authoritarian ideas. Let's act as good neighbors in Europe. President Rivlin, we would like to show Israel and the world that our country can live up the responsibility and the task that Remembers is giving us in order, in order what could happen will not happen. Thank you very much. And if you're just tuning in now, that was the German president addressing the German Bundestag at a ceremony to mark uh, 75 years since the liberation of Auschwitz. And joining me here in the studios are correspondent Elon Levy and Avi Pazner, who is a former Israeli ambassador.